and another one all the way down here. All right, well on this one, we're gonna increase the bed heat up to 50 degrees Celsius and give it another go. Let me show you all of our tests so far. Okay, one, two, two B, three, four, and uh, 4B basically is what we've done. So this is the test where we had the bed at 68 Celsius and we're using a 0.3 millimeter layer height. We moved it up to uh, 0.75 millimeter layer height and we were getting separation because, oh, and speed. This was at 3000 millimeters per minute. This was at 3000 millimeters per minute, but it had the larger layer height. This was at the larger layer height but at 1800 uh, millimeters per minute. You can see the big difference there, that layer height really coming through. And then we went to, uh, we changed the temperature because this stuck to the bed. So we dropped the temperature down to 34 Celsius on the bed and uh, we did it twice. This first one I thought maybe a wire or something got in there but uh, that wasn't the case. It was because it did not adhere correctly. We got a good uh, adherence on here, but then we lost it as it went up because it, it moved. The whole thing moved. The, this piece actually came off the bed and then it all moved out of place. Um, so those are our tests so far. All right, test case number five, which is really like eight. Perimeter popped off really easy. And that popped off very nice with no damage. <clears throat> so now, the only thing I have a problem with on this, all right, those lines all look nice. All right, nothing wrong with it, very symmetrical. Uh, there's a little gap in between them though, and that's a problem, and the gap's on the edge. So I can play with the bottom layer a little bit. The top looks like it needs more layers as well, and it's settled down there. That's because of the fill. Uh, that settling is because of the fill. There's a lack of fill in there. It's basically empty inside. So that's that's not an issue. Um, I, I'm not concerned Aste aesthetically. I'm not a huge fan of this. You can see those lines there. Just not a huge fan of those. But this bottom part is the part that really needs to be cleaned up. It all needs to be filled in. So let's do this test again. We'll change the quantity of the bottom layers. I got to do something while I'm waiting for the print. Safety Sally stopped by. She said, I'm out of compliance. So we're gonna fix that today. We're gonna fix, we're gonna make Safety Sally happy. Make her proud. Make that gal proud of us. This is one of the nice things about using plywood. We're getting official. Sally told me that I should have a fire extinguisher really close to where I do all this work at that is flammable. Ha <laughs> ha! Safety Sally is happy, let me show you why. Not only do we have the one up inside of the shop, but we have here at the fabrication bench. And another one all the way down here. And they're all mounted. Huge improvement. So we made Safety Sally happy. We got fire extinguishers mounted in all locations. We have one right behind you on the wall. We have another one right outside the door in case we need two in here and then there's two out there total there's one right there one over there so safety sally much happier now i know someone's gonna quote code or standards or whatever dude i have them i put them up i am so far above what i used to be before just give me a pat on the back and don't be mean this likes to stick right to that bed there came off though that's not bad at all all right, let's see here. So this one, we added more layers to it. Right there. That's not bad at all. For what it is, it's not bad at all. It has the five layers on top and bottom. You can see they're almost folding into each other there. This is two layers. Okay, here we go. Two layers on the bottom and three layers on the top as our previous print so bad i mean for what it is it really isn't horrible and we still have not bad it looks like we've got some problems right there in the corner 
Might be going too fast still. That looks cool with the sign in the back, doesn't it? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one more test tonight. Primary layer height of 0.75 is what we've been doing. Boy, that first one came out looking pretty sharp at 0.3. Let's let's try that. Let's, let's just go down to point three with these additional layers. 33 minutes for that thing to uh, do its job. If you've been following along the channel, you know we've been redoing the shop. And one of the things I did is I framed in upstairs. We, now we redid the shop because we need to get the big printer in here, get this place cleaned up so we can do some prints um, for the uh, grow walls and other things that we need to print. Uh, while I'm waiting, I have the upstairs area and I have a reloading bench up there uh, that I put in because my dad, when he passed away, gave me his reloading kit. Now, I'm going to open this and I'm scared to death there's going to be a giant mouse nest in it. So let's find out. Nope. No, there's not. Woo! Woo! That's nice that there's not a giant mouse nest in it. <laughs> oh man, so I've never reloaded in my life. I don't know how, but that won't stop me. You guys know that. That, it will not persuade the Martian not to do that. The basics, you need bullets, the brass to hold everything. You need uh, gunpowder, got a press here. Press it all in, measure everything out. Oh, so, uh, I think the best thing for us to do is probably get this all you know, laid out on the table upstairs and see see what pieces are missing. Old oh, man, he kept notes. It's cool seeing his handwriting. If you guys haven't lost your dad, you may not know what I'm talking about. You have, you do. So, uh, that was cool. Uh, I need to get this upstairs, get everything unpacked, and uh, we'll do that in another video. Uh, but. I really, I, I want to get into this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to these days because supplies are thin. Uh, but, you know, at least I want to get everything set out, see what's there. And, uh, yeah, we'll do that in another video. In the meantime, we'll just throw this guy over here. Well, call me crazy, but I'm pretty sure not supposed to be doing that. We might have ourselves a big old blob. Looks like we do. Yep. Okay, so that layer height would, was obviously way too small for what we're doing. And they don't want to be told of reality because it breaks into their delusion and their illusion of how their life should be. Point in time, a police officer can pull you over and give you a ticket for endangering the public. Or so the next print just completed. The perimeter comes off nice and easy. I cranked up the bed heat on this one and it looks like I got it a little too hot again. I got it up to uh, 60 Celsius. The last print was at 50. So I'm probably going to drop it back down to 55. Come on now, buddy. Come on up there. There it goes. Came off. I'm not a big fan of those edges right there like that. But there's still too much spacing in there. Those lines in between. All right, so let's see here. Count them up. One, two, three. Does that even count as a test? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty. Took us twenty tests to get to a very nice actual thickness. So. When I designed the walls, they were going to be quarter inch thick. That is way too thick. Uh, dropped it down to eighth inch thick. That is still too thick. And now we're down to a sixteenth of an inch here, which is a very nice thickness. Very strong, very sturdy. Uh, could almost go down to a thirty second. Uh, probably might consider that. But uh, we did another test here. Uh, this one had various things on it that told me were successful or not. So this is the back panel of a grow wall. And it is, uh, grow walls are 23 inches in width. This is 
what, uh, seven inches there in width. Uh, it's 25% scale. So, uh, yeah, it was like five, six, about like six inches there. Um, and what I was looking for is how this, how the, the surface that connects to the, uh, the print uh, bed actually came out, and it came out great, came out perfect, came out way better than what we did before. Uh, it's a single layer print, and then uh, the rest of this, which looks kind of messy, uh, is a scale problem. It, it's too small, and we couldn't get it with the size nozzle uh, that we're using here, uh, and the thickness, it, it didn't have enough to adhere to, so it failed there, which is a good lesson learned. But it was enough for me to go ahead and kick off another full scale test. So this has been, um, you know, not full time work days, um, but you know, a few like two, three days. I think no, two days, two days from here to here. Again, not full time, doing other stuff. Um, but we got these all printed up and really happy with how this one turned out. So uh, from a small scale standpoint, from a printer setting standpoint, speed line thickness, extrusion width, um, uh, layer height, everything. Really liked how this one turned out. Rock solid too. Really, really happy with that. We got the bed temperature changed as well. We got the nozzle temperature change. So let me go show you what it looks like right now. I know that reflection is kind of a, a turd there. Kind of hard to, hard to see everything, but uh, actually let's see. You know, I just release heat every time I do this, so. Ooh, but it is nice and warm. Here we go. Uh, so the prints are already, the support structure back here for a lip that's being made is being printed. And now it's going along creating the outer perimeter and then it'll start going in between. Uh, I see a little issue there, but that's gonna get covered up. Here it comes. It seems like something's wrong here. It's printing above the bed, why is it doing that? All right, well, let's stop that. So I found where the problem is at here. I'm trying to point it out so you guys can see it. There's uh, a, an extrusion that's on the, uh, the panel that is sticking out by half a millimeter or so. So I gotta trim that off and then uh, it'll all be set fine. Uh, printer just got the new file. That was my mistake, not the printer's mistake. Um, easy to find. Um, the Simply 3D, Simplify 3D software, pr getting better at navigating it, finding those things. Um, it has some uniqueness to it, but every app does. Uh, really liking the printer, really liking the enclosure, liking the heating beds, figuring out just how to use everything, get it all dialed in. Uh, the only thing that's missing on their website, which I'm gonna let them know, Modix's website, is just kind of the initial things you need to know when you're getting started kind of beyond calibration, right? There's the setting calibration and there's beyond calibration. So. Uh, this is going to take, this print should take about 13 hours, uh, so it's going to be an overnighter. I'm going to get it set up. I'm going to go have dinner with Mrs. Martian, uh, relax a little, and then come out and check on it. Uh, but that's going to be it for this video. So I hope you did enjoy it. Uh, been a lot of learning here. Hopefully it's useful to anyone else who gets one of the Modics or any other 3D printer, actually. Uh, it's good stuff for, for any printer. But if you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Help us out with the algorithm. Uh, hit subscribe if you'd like to follow along with us. Uh, ring the little bell so you get notified when I put up new videos. And don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. See things a little more behind the scenes and up to, up to date since we're a little bit behind real time on these videos. If you'd like to help us out, you can do so through Patreon. In the meantime, everybody, this is Real Martian. Stay safe. Out.